welcome back to Photography for the Rest of Us, a place for people who love the art of photography. My name's Carrie, and this is week four, day four of our Learn Photo Challenge. <laughs> Guys, we're almost to the end of the week. Uh, with these creative prompts, remembering that the week four, we're using creative ideas to try and come up with some really cool abstract things, pushing yourself out of the box a little bit, or just thinking about the world in a different way. If you found this video through Facebook and our awesome Learn Photo group, um, or photo community, um, do me a favor and go ahead and make sure you like the post and maybe just comment something in it to keep it boosted. We have 20,000 people in that group and there's about a thousand of us that are interacting with this challenge and not everybody sees it every time I post. So because we're not posting pictures right away for this week, because you know they take more work, um, if you could just do me a favor and go back and like interact with the post a little bit to keep it boosted so that everybody gets an opportunity to see it. I've gotten a bunch of messages from people that haven't seen the post, um, even though I'm posting them. So do me a favor, help me out. Okay, so week four, day four, we're talking about creativity and your prompt is, a story in one image. Now, this is kind of my jam. <laughs> like, I really like fine art and I really, really like uh, storytelling. And that's kind of like, I'm totally like gonna merge those things today uh, for the image for this prompt. Um, when I'm a travel photographer, I tend to tell work on this a lot. I tell, I work really hard to uh, get the feel of a place in one image or in a few images because Typically when they go with articles, um, they, you know, we, we can't do like 40 images about a trip to Vietnam. It has to be like Vietnam food scene in three images. Um, so this is actually like right in my wheelhouse, but I decided to like push it a little further into the uh, fine art, fun stuff that I like to dabble in. Um, it just gives me an opportunity to flex my creativity and try new things. So. For me, I kind of created my own story. I don't know if you guys have been watching and you can check, uh, there's a few of them out on Instagram and that, but um, I've been working on a sequence of kind of like mythological feeling images with the fine art. I did one with um, a phoenix. I'll put these up here. Um, I did one with Persephone, who was the queen of the underworld. Um, and I've kind of been playing with this idea of like, the stars and the Milky Way and that. And I, I really liked this idea and I hadn't like fully articulated it yet. Um, so this is uh, an opportunity for me to do that, which is what I did. So um, I've got my behind the scenes video that I talked through um, my lighting and that. So I will show you that now. Yeah, that I had for um, a while now actually. And this was a great challenge in order to try and actually execute it. But I really wanted to do something where I had um, a female figure standing with a lantern kind of like with the horizon lower on the ridge um, and have the stars showing uh, and blending in with her outfit so that it all kind of became one and that. And so um, this is the sketch that I did for that. Uh, I really liked the idea of kind of a starburst of the lantern as well because it kind of blends in with the idea of the stars and that. And then, so this is um, once I started talking about the lighting and thinking about the lighting. So this is my right sketch of the person again. Uh, and the light is coming from the lantern. And the challenge with a light coming from the lantern, especially if I really wanted that starburst pattern that I was talking about, is that in order to get the starburst, I need the light to shine directly into my lens. And in order to have that happen, I need to turn the light towards me rather than to, towards my model. And that means I'm not gonna be getting any light on my model. And even if this light was pointing towards my model, um, the challenge then would be that it would be a very, very specific um, light direction. Like we would only be getting light going this way towards her, right? And not like the full side. So in order to fix that and to also get my little starburst there, um, what I had to do is bring in a strip box. And so this is going to be my light source is this strip box over here, because that is going to make sure that the light is very specifically on the front section of my model and not bleeding off onto the ground or um, anywhere else. It just is specifically right in front of her. 
so that I can get that starburst pattern from the lantern and it looks as though the lantern is lighting her even though between you and me that is not actually the case. And the other thing that I really wanted to do here is use a super wide angle lens. So I'm going to use my 15 millimeter. It's like a 15 to 30 um, Tamron lens that I really like. Uh, I kind of have a whole thing for wide angle lenses anyway, um, but <laughs> with this it's even more so. I wanted to make sure that I got a low angle and a nice wide angle lens so that I could kind of give that weird perception of like the fabric flowing and everything blurring together and that. And so that is my game plan. We'll see how it goes. So after working through all of that and kind of having this idea in my mind, an idea of what I wanted with lighting, um, then it was just like figuring everything out. So here is a shot that I took of a bunch of the supplies. Um, I found this dress at a thrift store. It was like $15, I think. Um, I got this roll of sparkly tool on sale at my local craft store. I ordered this lantern off uh, Amazon, but I probably could have found one in a thrift shop if I had more time. I looked for a while. I'd been had an eye out, but I hadn't found one I really loved yet. Um, and then I got some sparkly things out of a craft drawer because I have craft drawers. <laughs> I have all sorts of random things in my craft drawers. Um, and that, so this were the, kind of the parts to my image uh, that I had in mind. And here is my lovely daughter, Sage, uh, after we got her all dressed up in my living room um, <laughs> to go out and shoot. Uh, so we wanted to kind of give her a feel of like, like a night goddess or like goddess in the stars kind of a vibe. Um, it was really cold that day, so I'm so happy and appreciative. I want to say this on record, on the internet. It's never going to go away, right? And I'm really, really appreciative of my family for doing this. Not only Sage freezing her butt off with this picture um, and others in the past, uh, but also my lovely husband helping with holding lighting and that because in the wind, uh, they tend to blow all, uh, all over the place. So what I did for this image was I put a uh, speed light actually in the lantern and I pointed the speed light at me, right? And just like we talked about in that other video, that meant that there wasn't any light on stage, but that I was gonna get a nice starburst effect. And then I use it, I use it, I used a strip box uh, for lighting because I wanted to make sure that light was very like specifically in one area of her face and her torso so that we could really make it look like that light was actually coming from the lantern, even though between you and me, it absolutely wasn't. Um, so here's a little behind the scene video on how that went. My nine-year-old Nora took this video for me. Um, I gave her my phone and was like, here, do it for the people. And as you can see in that video, it was daylight. Like it was totally daylight. So um, I wanna kind of step you through and obviously Photoshop was involved at some point, but this is the out of camera image. And I want you guys to see that because like, yes, I added stars. I probably could have gotten this image at night, uh, but I had to wait for a clear day and all the, and the, the, the timing didn't line out. So this is a stock image of stars. Um, I don't typically use stock images that much, though I think I did yesterday too. Uh, it's really not common for me, but um, with these videos and stuff, I'm kind of more on a timeline. So I have pulled into my stock a little bit, but the stars are a stock image. But as you can see from the straight out of camera image, like the lighting, the effect, what she looks like, like that's what it looked like in camera. So again, let's do a what my cell phone saw and what my camera saw. And this is all about just understanding light and understanding your lens choices and understanding like what image you're trying to create, okay? So this is my final image of a uh, star goddess type thing. I really wanted it to look like she was kind of blending into one. Um, you know, that there wasn't like a lot of definition between the two. Um, so hopefully you guys like that. What story am I telling? Good question. I'm pretty sure you could probably find a myth of some sort that had, <laughs> that had somebody like this in it. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys about specifically is that the, the star images don't, or star images, stories don't actually have to necessarily be literal but there should be a story involved or it should evoke the idea of a story to your viewer so if you have a picture of a tree right just a tree everybody can take a picture of a tree can you take a picture of a tree that tells a story 
I had a fantastic mentor back in the day who um, used to assign a, an assignment for his new photographers and the uh, and especially people going into photo journal, journalism because that's what he specialized in. Uh, he would say you have to take a picture of grass and it has to tell a story and it has to be one image. Like <laughs> just a blade of grass. And people came up with great stuff, right? Like they'd have a blade of grass with like a foot coming over it like it's about to be smooshed or like you know all sorts of stuff. So it's just a matter of like figuring out what story you want to tell and then deciding what images need to be included for that to happen or going the opposite direction and being in a situation and figuring out how to frame that situation so that it tells the complete story. Um, I do both in my work. As a travel photographer, it's typically in a situation and how am I going to frame it? What am I going to include? What aspects of my surroundings am I going to include in order to like show people my surroundings and give people a sense of the whole story. Um, and then when I do fine art stuff or fun stuff, um, then it's, okay, well, what do I include to tell the story I'm trying to tell? And that's what I want you guys to focus on today is how are you going to tell, like, what story are you trying to tell and what are you going to include in order to, for us to get the sense of what that story is? Um, I'm super excited. This is the last day before our big final, like, big final exam. I mean, not really exam, because right, we're doing this to learn and to have fun and to get feedback, but big final exam tomorrow for day five. Um, so make sure that you check that out. Remember, you've got to the end of the week. Honestly, I probably won't even pull anything until like Monday night because uh, I want you guys to have a little bit of time. So give yourself a little bit of time to do these. Um, but. I want to see what stories you have to tell. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. And I will see you tomorrow for our final day of our challenge. Bye.